Hey everyone, I greet you in the name of the Lord Christ Jesus. So look, this is a little bit comical, but it's also serious. Look, a lot of times when you see these new atheists and their arguments, like Christopher Hitchens or Dawkins or whatever, they make it seem like their arguments are just so logical and wise. But their entire arguments rest not on their actual logic, but on the fact that they speak in a proper sounding way and that they appear to be so logical. And it's like a trick because it deceives people into not noticing that they actually don't have any logic behind their statements. They mask it by trying to appear logical. It's all artifice, right? It's all like a... It's what Satan does all the time. He takes his greatest weakness and he puts it forward like, well, we all know and I claim this ground that this is true. The key is that's where the greatest weakness lies. It's a simple deceptive technique. and People use this all the time, that whatever you're guilty of, if you bring it up as the main point and accuse others of it, nobody seems to notice that you're actually guilty of it, right? So if you make yourself, my issue is hypocrisy. I stand against hypocrisy and I accuse you and you and you of hypocrisy. What's happening is that that's the best way to shield yourself from anyone looking to see if you're actually hypocritical. People do this all the time. Look, women know about this. Like, and I don't mean this as an insult to women. I mean it as like women tend to have much higher social intelligence than men. And what you can see women do a lot, wicked women, not women who are behaving righteously, is that if you sort of accuse them of something or point something out, they'll launch this counter accusation. And then everybody gets caught up in sort of defending from that. And uh, people miss the, the main point, uh, which is that they're, what they're putting forth is their greatest strength. They're doing it as a way to disguise that that's actually their greatest weakness. Actually, I believe this comes from Satan. And again, I'm not saying all women do this. Wicked women do this. Okay. But I just wanted to point out like a funny example because it, it drives me nuts. I see this all the time in these like apologetic debates. And I'm like, ah, go for the kill shot. It's right in front of you. But people like oftentimes don't notice it because Satan's very deceptive. So look, check this out. <laughs> Here's like a really good example of it. So just the other day, I saw some YouTube comment where someone was some video about the new atheists and how they're uh, blah, blah, blah. This is why the Bible isn't true. And someone, they said something like, huh, some sects of Christians believe that just by declaring that Jesus is the Lord that makes them say blah, blah, blah. And so I posted a comment and I said, no, declaring that Jesus is Lord is nothing. You must believe that Jesus is Lord is in your... In your heart, that is what does it. And I quoted the scripture about, uh, you know, that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried and rose on the third day, according to the scriptures and so on. So anyway, so I posted that and some guy immediately responded. Uh, ready? Check it out. Here's his here's his response. He said, because I said, this is true and this is how you're saved. And the guy said, Evan Carey, what can be asserted without evidence can equally be dismissed without evidence. Ergo, your claim is dismissed until proven otherwise. So look, here's the way you react to this. Now, most people are going to be like, well, but there is this uh, evidence behind it, which there is, and they're going to start putting evidence forth. But watch, there's a more elegant way to do it. Like you can reply like this, be like, I agree. I agree with your statement. What can be asserted without evidence can equally be dismissed without evidence. Therefore, I ask of you, what is the evidence that the statement that what can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence? Show me the evidence of this statement being true. <laughs> and right away, they're not going to be able to point to any evidence. They're going to have to go to some kind of logical principle or something. I'm going to say that could be true, but where's the evidence that that logical principle is true? And they can't do it. Apply their own thing to their own self, <laughs> because at the end of the day, this is simply an assertion that has no evidence behind it. <laughs> so like, this is how you can get past a lot of these apologetic atheistic arguments is accept their standard and immediately measure it back onto them. <laughs> and if, if they aren't willing to do it, say, okay, then, well, then I reject your standard. I accept your standards true. So show me what the evidence is that what can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence, because that's a claim. Show me the evidence for that. And the reality is that claim is not based on any evidence. It's based on a certain logical reasoning. And if all they do is go towards other logical reasoning, then say by your own claim, I then dismiss it. I agree with you. And that's <laughs> why you need to show evidence.
So I don't know if that makes sense to people, but oftentimes I see that there's very simple ways that can refute these sort of atheistic arguments. If you simply take their own argument and say, okay, it's true. Now let's apply it to your own argument. And so anyway, I'll let you guys know what the person responds. <laughs>